Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about something a little bit different to what I generally talk about here on my channel, and that is uh, weight loss and waist training. So perhaps over about the last maybe two to three months, I've lost um, a little bit of weight. I do firstly want to just stress that I have only lost weight for health type reasons. Um, you know, I've done six years of university straight. I've done a lot of studying, a lot of sedentary activity. Relationships make you put on weight. There is no denying that as soon as you are happy in a relationship that you put on weight. So me and Brandon have been together for nearly five years and sort of, I don't know, a little bit of happy love fat has sort of crept up on me. I don't think that I look overweight in any way. I was happy with how my body was before, but I wasn't feeling, you know, as energetic. I didn't feel as strong and athletic as I normally done. And I just didn't feel like myself. So I wanted to lose the weight over a longer period of time in a healthy way that was right for me and my body and my lifestyle. And I found it to be really effective. So I wanted to talk to you guys about how I did it and the little tips and tricks that I used to sort of shake those extra few kilos. And I also wanted to discuss a waist training with you. So waist training is essentially strapping a corset around your midsection to try and whittle down your waist and, um, you know, effectively like lose fat cells and things like that. So I wanted to tell you guys my honest opinion on waist training, what I think of it, does it work? Do I think it's a waste of money? All those kinds of things. So if you guys want to learn how I lost weight, then please keep on watching. Now, before I jump into it, I do want to say I probably lost about five kilos. I think for those of you on the other side of the world, you do your weights in pounds, so it's probably what, like 11 pounds? I did it over the course of about two to three months, so I didn't do it, you know, smack overnight. I was really kind and gentle on my body the way that I did it. It wasn't painful, it wasn't stressful, it wasn't hard, I didn't have to stop socializing, like it was a really, really good way to do it. So I wanted to share it with you guys because I know that some of you are struggling to lose weight. I know that it, like being a woman, it's kind of like an endless battle with us. We are always unhappy with our appearance and things like that. And I do just quickly want to say, don't look at the girls in the magazines and think, oh my God, I'm fat because I don't look like that. It really, really breaks my heart to see young people looking at those images and thinking, oh, I've got cellulite, so I must be ugly and no one's ever going to love me. Like, it is not like that. You are beautiful just the way you are, exactly the way you are. I would only recommend you losing weight if it's affecting your health, if it's affecting your energy levels, and if it's affecting you on a personal level. Don't think about what anybody else thinks. Only think about what you feel in the comfort of your own skin. I'm not, you know, a size zero girl. I've got quite a bit of muscle on me. I've got a big booty. I'm an hourglass figure and I'm perfectly happy that way. I love being a curvy girl and Brandon loves me being a curvy girl. That's not to say that you're not beautiful if you're not a curvy girl. I just want to tell you to be comfortable in your own skin and only do this for the right reasons. Don't ever lose weight because you feel pressure from, you know, the media, from celebrities, things like that. Don't listen. It's not true. And yeah, big hug. Big hug from me to you. <laughs> so let's get into the nitty gritties of how I lost weight. Um, first up, you might not want to hear this, but there is absolutely no shortcuts to losing weight. You can't just do a fad diet and then in two weeks, you know, be at your perfect healthy weight and think that you can maintain it. Uh, uh, uh. It does not work like that. And I'm coming from experience. I have literally done every single fad diet out there. Okay. I've quit sugar. I've quit fat. I've quit carbs. I've done the Atkins. I've done the Dukin diet, which you pretty well eat a low fat protein only. I have done cleanses. I have done detoxes. I have done liver detoxes. I've been a vegan. I quit dairy. Mm -mm, nothing works. At the end of the day, weight loss is all about calories in versus calories burnt. So you have to eat less calories than the calories that you are burning for the day. Now, for those of you that are new to my channel and you might not know, I do actually have six years um, in a medical type background. I'm a fully qualified division one registered nurse. So in Australia, that's kind of like the highest level that you can get to. I don't know what you guys call it in the States and things like that. And I'm also a fully qualified paramedic. So I've got six years of university training behind me. I know all about metabolism. I know about health. I know about nutrition. I know all about this kind of stuff. So if it helps for me to tell you that first before telling you 
um, you know, how I went about losing weight, it might give you a little bit of confidence um, because I do legitimately, like without trying to stand out myself, I do legitimately know about this kind of stuff. So I promise you, I'm not just making up crap. <laughs> So you're basically at the end of the day, if you think you can cheat the system and, you know, continue to consume more calories than you're burning, you're not going to lose weight because your body is never going to use that fat that you've got stored on your body as an energy source. It's only going to use what you're taking in as an energy source. Not only that, it's going to continue storing the excess calories that you're taking in as fat. So that is essentially um, my first tip. Don't try fad diets. Then they're just going to break your heart. They're going to let you down. They're going to make you feel like crap, dizzy, fainty, nauseous, headaches, palpitations, you name it. Those fad diets will give that to you. So don't do it. Second tip is don't try and lose weight overnight. You need to do it in a healthy way that is not going to cause stress on your body, stress on your hormones, stress on your nervous system. You need to do it in a slow sort of process. Um, I, I reckon two to three months is probably a healthy time frame to lose five kilos. Um, Some of you that are carrying a little bit more weight than I was, you could probably healthily lose 10 kilos in that time, but don't put stress on your body and don't starve yourself. Starving yourself is actually completely counterproductive to the whole weight loss equation. Back from, you know, when we were cavemen chasing tigers and stuff around, our bodies are pre-programmed to store fat for times of famine because we would go weeks without a meal, like a big healthy meal. We were only eating when we were catching our prey. So say we caught, I don't know, a buffalo. We ate and ate and ate and ate and ate until we couldn't eat anymore. And then for the next, you know, however long, we didn't have any food. So our body stored all of the excess calories that we took in and then prepared itself for famine. So prepared itself to have to live off its fat stores for as long as it possibly could. That's essentially an innate thing, something that we're born with, something that's part of our metabolism and our, and our genetic makeup. We can't actually get rid of that. So if you starve yourself, your body thinks that it's waiting weeks until it gets its next meal. So it's not going to burn its fat stores in a quick way. It's going to hold on to every single last little fat store that it possibly can so that it can survive. Humans are all about survival, survival of the fittest, you know, living as long as we can. So your body will pretty well act against you if you try and starve yourself. So don't do that either. I promise you, not only will you feel like crap, like death, <laughs> it will not work. The third tip that I want to tell you guys is don't be afraid of fat. So I think in the Western world, you know, we've all been raised up to think that fat is like this evil thing that, um, you know, makes us fat, is bad for us, it's going to give us high cholesterol, heart disease, all of this sort of stuff. Don't be afraid of fat. Now, when I say fat, I don't mean, you know, deep frying all of your food in butter. I mean the healthy fats. So uh, avocado, nuts, coconut oil, seed oils. Don't be afraid to use these in your cooking and actually increase your fat intake. Fat is so much more filling than sugar. I promise you that. And when you increase your fat intake, you actually, in the long run, end up consuming less calories because you don't need to eat as much. You're not hungry as often. I really like to eat avocados for breakfast and lunch. I really like almonds, walnuts, uh, peanuts, cashews for snacks. They really, really fill you up. And yeah, don't be afraid of, oh, you know, fat's going to harm me. It's not going to harm you. Buy full fat milk, buy full fat cream. Don't bother cutting all that crap out because if you actually have a look at the packaging on these low fat products, they've actually got more sugar in them, more calories and a low GI. So yeah, don't be afraid of fat. It's good for you. It's good for your nervous system, your tissue growth, your bones, your skin, all of your collagen production to make you look younger. <laughs> fat is your friend. <laughs> So now that I've got those sort of like three tips out of the way, I want to tell you exactly how I lost the weight. So I was consuming less calories on a daily basis. I tried to stick anywhere between 1,200 to 1,300 calories a day. Now that was right for my weight and my height. I had it all calculated and whatnot so that I wasn't actually, you know, starving myself to the point of not being able to function. And I was still consuming enough calories that I needed for my metabolism, for my cells, my brain to function, all that kind of stuff. So if you type into Google BMR calculator or if you type in... Um, how many calories do I need to lose weight? You'll come up with a calculator and you basically you pop your weight, your height, your age, your sex in, your activity level. I think you put like what you do for your job in there. And it basically spits out a number of calories that you should be eating a day to maintain your weight. And then it'll also give you an another lower number to lose weight. So for me, that was, I think, 1,250 maybe. Um, I tried to stick around that level and I have been consistent with that over a long period of time. 
Now, when I say that I've been consistent, I don't mean that I have not been living my life at the same time. I think that's another huge thing when you're on, you know, a health kick or a weight loss journey. Don't set rules that are unrealistic. You still need to have fun. You need to go out with your friends. You need to go to the movies and have an ice cream and that popcorn that you've been thinking about all week. Don't, you know, restrict yourself to the point of being unhappy and not enjoying yourself. Just eat things in moderation. So I allowed myself one cheat meal a week and I could have what? Ever I want. If I want a pasta, like a mountain of pasta, I would have it. If I wanted, I don't know, takeout like McDonald's or Kentucky Fried Chicken, like I would have it. And all through the week when I was like, oh, you know, I really, really want a Mars bar, I just say to myself, Kane Kia, you've got your cheat meal in like four days, just wait. And, and so then I found by waiting until the end of the week for it, it was like a reward and every week I would get my reward and it just really kept me on track. So yeah, don't completely just be like, okay, focus. I'm only going to eat chicken and broccoli and that's it and I'm not going to do anything else and oh my God, my brain is imploding. Like, it's not, it's not healthy and it's not fun. Life is about being fun. YOLO. Like, literally YOLO. Don't waste your YOLO-ness while it's there because you never know what will happen next week and just think, if you're not enjoying yourself, then you are not living your life to the fullest. So YOLO and have a cheat meal because it's good for you. So my 1200 calories that I was eating a day, I was breaking up into small meals. So for example, for breakfast, I'd eat 300 calories. Between breakfast and lunch, I'd eat 150. Lunch, I'd eat 300 calories. Between lunch and dinner, I'd eat 150 calories. And then for dinner, I'd have 300 calories. So essentially I was eating five smaller meals a day. Um, now with these meals, I wasn't, you know, starving myself. I wasn't reducing carbs. I wasn't reducing, you know, not eating fruit. I wasn't not enjoying the things that I like. I was basically just making the portions much, much smaller so that they fit within my calorie allowance. So if you're particularly interested in wanting to hear about what I was sort of eating on a day-to-day -day basis, I'd be more than happy to do another video talking about like specific meal plans that I would follow. And it might actually make you happy to hear that my meal plans included, you know, bread, they included cheese, they included like, you know, all the things that when you think about, oh, I'm on a diet that you can't have, I was eating them and I still lost weight. <laughs> So yeah, five small meals a day and like I said, work out how many calories you should be eating and try and stick to it except for your cheat meals. Now with reference to exercise, I was probably working out maybe five days a week. Um, it, it would depend on where I was with my roster and stuff. I do a lot of night shift and things, so it would depend on you know where I was at. But I really tried to stick to the gym five days a week. And me, just like I'm sure all of you, we all have our days when we're like, oh, I can't think of anything worse than going to the gym. Like I would rather poke myself in the eye with a fork than go to the gym right now. I pretty well said to myself in my head, I said, right, I know that you don't want to go to the gym. I know you're feeling tired and crappy and you just want to sit on the couch and, you know, watch Carrie Bradshaw run around New York City. But I said to myself, commit to 15 minutes of exercise. And if you still are hating it when you're there, if you're still like, oh, you know, I, I don't want to be here. This is just miserable. Then I went home. But I sort of always found that by the time I got to that 15 minutes of exercise, I was enjoying it and I wanted to stay. So yeah, it was kind of like a little promise that I made to myself. I was like, commit to 15 minutes of exercise. And if you're still hating it, then you're off the hook. Like you don't have to exercise for that day. But yeah, like I said, I always ended up wanting to. Like once you get those endorphins happening and you know, you're sweating and you've got Katy Perry blaring through your headphones, like you're, you're enjoying it, you're having fun. So you sort of like you end up staying there. I combined cardio sessions with weight training. I would advise that if you are going to join a local gym, just have a chat to the trainers there about what you're wanting to achieve with your body and get them to sort of draw up like a little program for you um, that you can follow and that you can stick to and you know you can monitor and track your results. Um, it's a little bit easier for me because Brandon is a beefcake and he's at the gym all the time. So he was a lot of help for me to know, um, you know, what exercises I should be doing, how much weight I should be lifting. I got to tell you, I have improved so much. I can bench press 50 kilos. For someone who's like five foot two, that's impressive. And I'm like this tiny little girl, you know, with like all this makeup on and stuff, but I can bench press 50 kilos. So I'm super impressed with that. I liked to change up my cardio a bit, um, you know, running, cross trainer, walking uphill, going on the bikes, walking outside, just all of that kind of stuff. Um, I would just switch it up. So I do one day of cardio, then the next day I'd weight train, then the next day I'd do cardio, the next day I'd weight train. And on the last day I just did sort of whatever I felt like. So that was my five days for the week. I'm only there for 50 minutes. You know, I'm not slogging away for three hours, killing myself at the gym. You don't need to do that for results. You don't actually even need to go to the gym to lose weight if you're restricting your calorie intake in a consistent way. 
Um, your body still will live off its fat stores. I wanted to go to the gym for muscle definition and for cardiovascular health. So I did it for other reasons as opposed to the weight loss. Um, I've always loved the gym. I've always been very sporty. So um, it wasn't really a new thing to me anyway. So yeah, basically over the course of two to three months, I put all of these things into place. Now I'm obviously not going into detail because we'd be sitting here for like four hours. But I found all of these techniques to work really well with my body and my life. Like I said, I didn't want it to be a chore. I didn't want it to be you know, impossibly difficult and just like, oh, I'm on this horrible diet and I can't even live my life. Don't make it like that. Make it a goal that's realistic. You know, five kilos or 10 kilos in a few months is a healthy, achievable goal. Don't be like, oh, I'm going to lose 20 kilos in a month and then be devastated at the end. You need to set realistic and achievable goals rather than, you know, setting yourself up for failure, basically. I hope this video is not too long, but to be honest, it probably needs to be because this is really important to me and I want to keep you guys healthy as well. I don't want you doing crazy stuff to hurt yourself. So let's continue. <laughs> I'm sure that you have all heard of waist training, right? It is all over social media. I think the craze actually started with Kim Kardashian. She was posting little photos on her Instagram of her wearing a corset or a you know belly binder after her pregnancy. This is a waist trainer. They look like this. They're made of very, very stretchy rubber and material and latex. They come with, um, you know, a line of hook closures down the front. They've also got plastic banding in them so that, you know, when you bend over and then stand back up, it doesn't stay like kinked over. I got my waist trainer from bunnycurves.com. I think that's what the website's called. I'll pop it on the screen here and I will link it in the description bar below as well. As far as that website goes for buying waist trainers, they are absolutely fantastic and I couldn't recommend them anymore. The prices are great, the shipping was great, the staff are great. It looks pretty, like it's a really, really great website. I got the sport trainer off that website. Um, so what it looks like, of course I got purple, like duh, why would I get black? Okay, so when you see all of the waist trainers on these websites and things like that, they're telling girls to strap themselves up in these waist trainers and wear them for 10 to 12 hours a day. I don't agree with that. I'm just going to say it straight up. I don't think that it's effective. Sure, you might get a short term result because you're compressing the fat cells. Okay, I might have to get a little bit scientific here. How will I say this? So... It's like a sponge. If you squeeze a sponge together really, really tightly, the water inside the sponge has to go somewhere else. It's the same with fat cells. If you're compressing fat cells around your tummy, sure, you're going to get short-term results because that fluid is going to shift elsewhere. But as soon as you remove the waist trainer or you stop, you know, even if you wear it for months and months and months, as soon as you stop wearing it, the fluid's going to get back, the fat's going to resettle in those abdominal areas and you're going to be straight back to square one. In my opinion, these are not like a corset. Corset training is totally different. We pretty well wear like a, a metal nearly cage around your midsection and you, you actually reduce muscle mass, fat, and you actually shift your organs around to give you a different shaped waist. These don't do this. These are stretchy garments made of rubber and elastic and things like that. These are not going to achieve that. But with that in mind, waist training while exercising is absolutely fantastic if you're wanting to burn a lot of calories and sweat out a lot of toxins. I have found this absolutely incredible for doing cardio. So I will wear mine when I'm doing um, running, cycling, I'm on the cross train and anything like that. And it's similar to the concept of bodybuilders wearing, you know, jumpers and beanies when they're working out. It makes them sweat so much more. It makes their bodies need to work harder to sweat because as you all know, we sweat so that our bodies stay at a safe temperature because exercise increases our body temperature. So we sweat to get rid of that excess heat. And when you've got more heat, your body has to work so much harder to get rid of that excess heat. You sweat so much more, like you sweat bullets when you wear a waist trainer, I promise you. And a really, really nice little side effect of that is that you burn so many more calories when you wear a waist trainer to do cardio. And because they're lined with latex and rubber, they also target the fat loss. So you will lose more fat around your midsection if you are working out with a waist trainer as opposed to if you are not. So yeah, there's heaps and heaps of stuff, heaps of research, scientific evidence, all of that available online. So just do a quick Google search if you want to learn more about it. So like I said, I'm obsessed with wearing this for exercise, but I wouldn't personally recommend wearing it all freaking day long, sleeping in it, whatever. I mean, if that's your choice, go for it. But I think that once you stop wearing it, you're gonna pretty well go back to square one. It might take a little a little while, but you will go back to square one because it's just, it's, it's not, scientifically and realistically, it's not the way that it works. But for the gym, for burning calories and for burning more fat around the abdomen, 100%, I absolutely love them. And I gotta tell you, you look dang good when you're wearing it. You're like, yes, I look like a 
skinny giant. <laughs> it's so good. Now, everybody's going to have a different opinion on this. I'm going to have a different opinion probably to you watching it there right now. Hi. Hello, you. <laughs> But um, do your research, look around, speak to your doctor if you want to. Some people have had good results with a waist trainer, but the only way to maintain those results is to continue consistently wearing it pretty much forever. So if that's, you know, what you're into, then that's fine. You know, I don't have a problem with that. But I personally don't want to wear a waist trainer every day of my life. Yeah, that's true. So... I think I'm going to stop rambling now. I have, I feel like this video is going to be like three hours long and I apologize if it is. I hope that this video answered some of your questions a little bit. I know that it's quite a touchy subject um, and you know, it affects us all in different ways. So please feel free to send me emails, ask me questions in the comments below and I will do my best to answer all of them. I'm here to help you guys. So yeah, just ask me any questions that you need. And like I said, if you're interested in seeing another video on sort of what I would eat on a typical day or a week, I'd be happy to do that as well. So yes. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will catch you all in my next video, which will probably be back to makeup. <laughs> all right, guys, have a great day. Bye.